Today, I'm going to share with you some mistakes people make in training. I'm hoping that you don't make the same mistakes. Let's not waste any time. Let's roll the intro. I'm sure you have some training tips that you want to share with the community. Don't be shy. Drop in a comment in the video below and go help someone out. Right at the top of the list when it comes to training mistakes, the biggest one I see people doing is when they start loaning players out when they are 17 years old. The thing is, you never loan a player until he's 18 or even older. The reason is simple. He develops through training. He will develop much more effectively if he's training with the youth players. Now, the thing is this, they're going to use your training facilities at your club. So when you loan a player out, he might go to another club which has inferior training facilities and this will hamper his development. So please, never loan a player until he is 18 years old. And even if he's in your own club, you don't want to overplay. That's my second tip. When you have youth players, you want to be very careful about their game time. You do not want to be playing them in every single game. So if a player is good enough in terms of attributes to play in the first team, he might be 17 years old, you bring him into the first team, you give him some game time, but you make sure that he has ample time to go for training. You don't want to overplay this 17 year old. You want to bring him on when you're leading by a goal to nil so that he doesn't feel the pressure of having to perform, but he still picks up a good match rating. However, if you play the same player for 90 minutes in every single game, there's a strong chance he'll get jaded, he might even get injured. When that happens, his attributes take a knock, there's a downward decline in his attributes, and this affects his development potential. So you want to make sure that you do not overplay them. How many matches do players need? Basically, between the ages of 18 to 20, you're looking at about 15 games, 45 minutes each, bring him on, let him get a good match rating, take him off, don't overplay him, don't make him get jaded. It's a nice balance to have. Now, there are some players who are extraordinary and you want to push them. I have a player called Tobias Augustin Anderson over in Barlemo. We signed him and he was 17 years old and he was actually better than the rest of my defenders. I had no choice. I had to play him almost every single game. But I was very, very careful. Each time I saw a dip in his match condition, you know, you see that little uh, indicator. If it takes a sudden drop, then what I would do, I immediately took him off. And I also made sure that I would rest him occasionally. But there's a price you pay for this, his development. Because when they're 17 to 18, they actually do better when they're through training, not through games. When a player is 18 years old, he does better by playing games. So you want to remember this clear distinction. Here's the third mistake I see most people making when it comes to training. They choose position training over role training. Now this, for me, is a big mistake. It's like you're taken over training, but you still have the ass man running around doing training for you. That's how big a mistake this is. You can't say that you are doing individual training for your players if you're choosing position training. There's a very simple reason. Position training does not train him in any one single role. It's a roulette. Yes, you're throwing dice in a gambling casino and hoping that it lands on one of the roles you're hoping for. So if you want a player to develop in a certain specific way, then choose a role. It doesn't matter what role he plays because role, duty, familiarity, you know that little bar at the bottom of the screen is the most insignificant bar in the whole game. It's based off an algorithm in the game that determines whether a player's attributes are good enough for their role. All you need to worry about is that the bar hits the halfway point. Once he hits the halfway point, you're safe because then he's accomplished in the position and he knows his duty. What about separate training schedules for youth players? Now, this is very important. When it comes to youth players, you have to ask yourself a decision. How soon do you want him to play in the main team? If you want him to play in the main team tomorrow and he's lacking a few attributes, then focus on the role that distributes the least amount of attributes because then you're doing a very focused training program for that youth player. 
So I have this player who's a defender. And I know that if he's training as a ball-playing defender, then there's a lot of attributes. He might not be ready for the first team. That's exactly what I did with Tobias Augustin Anderson in his first two seasons. I only train him as a central defender. So I managed to sign this player, Tobias Augustin Anderson, on a free. You know, he's only 17 years old. So I told the boy, you focus on becoming a central defender. That's it. It doesn't cost too many attributes, but it aims for the mental attributes that are so valuable to me in the game. And then... After a season or two, we only we didn't overplay him. Now he's in his uh, third season with the club. I am actually now moving him into the ball playing defender uh, role because we want him to become a really good ball playing defender. He's already a leading defender in our club, but we are very focused on his development, and I'm very happy to see how he has developed at the club. And this is something that you want to be careful of when you are playing the game of football manager. This leads on to the next mistake I see people uh, doing, which is, um, you know, you've gone there, you've chosen a specific role for the player, and then, you know, he's unhappy with the quickness training. Yeah, we see that all the time. Seven of them come to you, dude, you know, I'm not happy with having to sprint all the way, touch that coconut tree and watch it drop on my head. And you are turning around going, I don't care, just keep on running to that coconut tree, shake the tree hard enough so that the coconut drops on your head. The thing is, I've seen people overreact as well and the players are unhappy and they immediately want to change the training around. Don't do that. Unhappiness doesn't affect development because it sounds almost strange, I know, but there have been plenty of tests done by plenty of others in the community. All you have to do is go and Google it on YouTube. You will find plenty of information out there which confirms what i'm gonna say right unhappiness does not affect training so if a player is unhappy ignore him don't react don't feel like you need to praise him don't feel that you need to give him a new contract just ignore him because if the only thing you're worried about is training development then he's still gonna develop he's still gonna develop well and the final mistake I see people doing when it comes to training, and this is a classic, they promote like seven players to the main team. You don't want to do that either. You know, too many young players mixing around with the senior players. It kind of affects the training itself for the senior players too because then you have way too many players for the coaches to handle and this causes a loss in quality. And this can affect the development of a lot of players so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you bring in no more than i would say the good number is three don't bring in more than three now unless of course you intend to kick out all the senior players because it's a youth development challenge and you'll just replace them with youth players then by all means go and do what you're doing because you obviously are insane enough to do a youth ch challenge in some remote part of the world in a lower tier league yes they have plenty of mistakes people can make with training. And these are some of the bigger mistakes I've seen people make. So if you are going to play the game of football manager, it's really simple when it comes to training. I've already done a complete training schedule. Now that's easy. Okay? It, the game of football manager is so simple when it comes to training. You can actually just autopilot training. I've been doing it for the last three years. And honestly, the spread in attributes is so balanced that you don't have to worry about training anymore. And yes, quite a number of people have been using my training schedules and no one has complained. It's the easiest training schedules you'll ever use in the game because all you got to do is worry about boot camp for the first few weeks. After that, you put them on a training schedule that boosts their tactical familiarity. When they hit November, all you got to do is use the complete training schedule all the way until the end of the season. If there are two games a week, you use the lazy match prep. Yes, I call it lazy match prep because it's only got match preparation activities inside it. That's it. Training can be very, very simple in the game of football manager. And yet, um, there are some very fundamental mistakes I see people making, and this affects their development. And if you're making those same mistakes, I hope that this video has helped you out. If you have any more questions or you want to share some ideas, let me know in the comments below. Meanwhile, I want to thank you for your support. You have been absolutely fantastic. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.